Hey everybody, it's Beverly at Bama Blind, and today I'm going to talk about what's in your wallet. If you're blind, do you know? I think I'm going to show you some techniques that you might already know about, but you might not know about, and they might be very helpful because they're, they're techniques that I have used for years, and they come in quite handy. The first thing that I do is I find a wallet, and I found this wallet probably 25 years ago. I've had it for so long. It's leather, it's held up. It was actually designed by a completely blind person who designs things like this, and that's why I ordered it. Um, and this wallet carries all of your cards. Uh, it will open out to the size of a, a denomination bill. So it's got many, many compartments, but I keep things simple. This wallet fits in your back pocket. It fits in your front pocket. It fits in a small little uh, crossover bag. So it's, it's a very convenient size wallet to have. It's maybe a half an inch thick, folded, full, full of what I've got anyway. <laughs> I guess if I had more money, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be so thin. <laughs> <laughs> but in the what I do is I organize the the cards that I carry so that I'm not caught out in public having to ask a person with sight to help me like a helpless blind person and those things are personal and we all know that I also like the idea that I don't have to ask my husband who's with me um, because you know if i if i'm asked for uh, a credit card if i'm paying for something and i just shove him my wallet and say here you you find my credit card and give it to them then that just reinforces the the attitude toward people without vision that we are just helpless and we can't function independently organizing and maintaining your wallet and your money and your credentials is quite doable even if you're completely blind. So what I typically do in mine is I have um, the, the most important cards that I keep and I keep them in an order so that I can keep up with them. My most important that I use, that I pull out most often, I believe, is a non-driver's ID. Now my non-driver's ID is the same size of every other laminated card that I have. It's flat on both sides, so it has nothing tactile on it at all. It's smooth on the back side, it's smooth on the front side. And I went and got the star ID uh, because we'll be using those probably by next year um, across the U.S. at least for domestic flights and you'll need a star ID and they issue the star non-driver's ID and the star driver's license ID. And so I just had to show the same credentials as everybody else when I went to the driver's license uh, department to get mine. So I, I, I put that in front and then right behind that I keep my credit card. I try to use just one credit card at a time. Sometimes I might carry two, but I typically just use one credit card. I don't use a debit card personally, but you could use a debit card. Now, the, the credit card debit card has tactile um, words on it that are embossed, so that's easy to find. It's the only thing in my wallet that is embossed and I keep it right behind my star driver's license. Then I flip my wallet onto the other side. I've, never, I've not even opened my wallet because like I said, this wallet was designed so that you have easy access and you don't have to fumble. On the opposite side of the wallet is a whole other set of slots. The first one I have is my uh, primary insurance card, which is also a federal identification card. And it has, I have put a location dot in the corner of that, and I know which corner it's in. So I'm not gonna show it on camera, but I know when I pull that out, when my finger hits that dot, I know how to orient that card so that the person that's asking for that card is looking at the card in the right orientation. Just because I have put my look dot, this it's like a bump dot, I've put it on the top left-hand corner 
of the front of the card. So if I turn it around to the person, then I know that they're looking at it uh, correctly. And I use that a pretty good bit. Uh, I have to use it on federal installations. Um, and then right behind that, I have my secondary insurance card, which feels different because it's the same size, but it's not as heavily laminated. It's not as rigid as my other three cards that I have in, in here on the exterior of my wallet. So I keep my two insurance cards together. One just happens to be a federal identification card. Now I open up the wallet and inside the wallet I can keep bills, but I also keep something that is really cool, I think. And it is a, another laminated card. It's exactly the same size. It's exactly the same shape. There's nothing different about the way this card feels, so I had to put a piece of tape on it. I put the tape on the back, and this card is an, an identification card issued to me by the Seeing Eye Institute in New Jersey. And it's got a picture of me and my guide dog, Gretchen, and it's got her uh, serial number, her identification number, which is in her microchip, and it also has an expiration date of 2029. And I got her two years ago. So the card is good for 12 years. And, you know, I'm not gonna get into the laws and the, the, um, the technicalities of credentials for guide dogs, but you do not have to have any credential for a, a real, a certifiable, service dog. There are no federal standards for that. But the seeing eye issued this just in case you get caught in a position where someone asks you, where is your credential? Well, this is an absolute credential. It's got seeing eyes phone number on it. They can call them. Um, I've never, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I've never had to use it. I have had to use it one time in a restaurant that opened on the very first day and they put the server who was all of 16 years old at the front and she saw Gretchen and she said, I need to see your paperwork on your dog. And I felt sorry for her because I, you know, I'm not gonna get into that, but I was able to use that. I was able to pull it right out of my wallet because I keep it in the same place in this wallet all the time. And then the other part of being independent is uh, using money, I, I love to use cash. You know, when I go out, I love pulling out cash, using it, and not having to keep up with the paperwork of a um, credit card statement. Uh, my husband does a lot of that, so I'm kind of fortunate in that way. But I have found that I've got a lot of money here, and uh, I'm just shuffling it around. I, you know, it's. Some of it is facing toward me, some is facing toward the camera, I don't know. To me, this is just a stack of money, and I know it's real money, because you can tell by the feel that it's real money. Some is really, really crinkled. I mean, it's, it's laid out flat, but it's really, really crinkled. And then some is not as crinkled, it looks a little bit newer. So I'm going to show you how I identify my money, and then I fold my money in certain ways, so that when I'm out and about, I can pull something out and I, because of the way it's folded, I know exactly what it is. But prior to that, prior to leaving my home or leaving a place that's uh, private, I take my iPhone and, hey Siri, launch Money Reader. I launch Money Reader. Money Reader running. And five dollars. She identifies. Okay, that that first. Five dollars. That second one was five dollars. $5. Third one is five dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. She's so fast. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. And that's all I've got. So that's how quickly she identifies it. So if you are using Money Reader in a, uh, let's just say you 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 forgot or you don't like to fold your money, you can bring out a a bill at, at the clerk at the checkout counter five dollars and it tells you exactly I have never had this be wrong I've used this app for three years now and it's awesome I'm just twenty dollars I'm just pulling it random I don't know if I'm pulling 
$10. I don't know if I'm pulling out. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're uh, showing the front or the back of the bill. I'm going to take this bill in my right hand now. I'm going to fold it in half and see if she can read it. I don't know if she can or not. $10. She did. Okay, so that's a $10 bill and it's folded in half. So she's able to identify it uh, just by reading. Now I'm going to fold it the other way. Cause I don't know if that was the back or the front. I can't see it. There's not enough contrast on bills anymore for me to see. So let me do this one. $10. Yep. So she can identify it either way, folded, folded or not folded. Um, and if you do those things, if you um, strategically place your cards, if you strategically fold your money, if you identify your money in a private place, even if you don't have money reader, get someone you trust to help you identify the money, fold it in any way you see fit, and then keep it that way. Let that be your system. You won't ever need to get out into public and, and shove your wallet into somebody else's hand and say, here, find this. Because people, I can't tell you how many people I have been with when I'm at a counter and I'm purchasing something and I've had a friend say, oh, here, let me help you. And they start digging in my purse. <laughs> and, and you don't do that. So <laughs> I always say that. Thank you for thinking of that. But no, I, you know, I've been working with money now for 40 years and I, I have a way to identify money just like you do. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the system or if you have different ways that you identify money and you want to share that with us, please leave the comments down below. And um, if you like this type of video, hit the like button. Uh, I'm typically not in front of the camera, so I don't know if you like these kinds of videos or not. <laughs> But uh, I enjoy sharing the information and I will talk to you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.